everybody. Come on in here. Yeah, let's let's get started. Let's get started. It's Tuesday. That means it's plan and play day. Tomorrow is anti-procrastination day. Thursday is Aaron day. Friday is clean out our car day and date night and purse. Clean out your purse. We got to plan for every day. But we got to be ready. You know, we that plan is our basic weekly plan. Right now, uh, we just have to be ready. I I'm, I'm, was reminded of a parable. I don't know if it was a parable or if it was Elijah that told the widow to gather up every jug, go to the neighbors and gather up every jug that she could find. I don't, I, I have to look it up. Sister, if you can look it up, please tell me where it is. But I know, I know what, what it says. And it says that she had, she didn't have, she was getting prepared for the future. And there was a famine. And so, she had to get every jug and it was a miracle. Every jug got filled with oil, uh, oil for making bread, oil. Now there was another one where Elijah went to this lady and said, can you fix me a cake of bread? And she says, all I have left is just enough to feed my child. And then we're just going to die. And he said, if you'll feed me a little cake of bread, I will take care of you. And she had flour and oil always in her, her canister set. She always had it. She always had it. So to God be the glory, to God be the glory. And Life is good, y'all. Life is good when we do what God tells us to do. Be prepared. You know, our houses being a mess around us, we can't find anything. But when we create order in our homes, that lets us know what we're lacking. Robert went to the grocery store this morning. He's got a doctor's appointment this afternoon. He has to leave here in just a little bit to be there by one o'clock and it's really getting irritating for him to have to drive that far just to have, you know, just to see the doctor once a year because we're, we're not sick and you know, doctor's offices are full of sickness. So (laughs) y'all stay at them as much as possible. That's what I do. Anyway, we have to be prepared. Joseph got Egypt ready. For seven years of famine, during seven years of plenty. We may not have seven years of plenty, but you know what we can do? We can get enough stuff in our house, get some tortillas or learn how to make tortillas. I even have a little thing that smashes the tortillas, but you can roll them out with a a rolling pin. But get some tortillas some beans, some cheese. We've got, I've got powdered cheese, powdered cheese that Robert likes to put in his peanut butter because the peanut butter, he has organic peanut butter. It's not salty enough for him. So he puts the organic cheese in there. So folks, Having a pantry that could feed your family in a moment of of, um, emergency. Like there's a storm, a derailment, an earthquake. You know, having a pantry is going to help us. 2 Kings 4, 1 through 4, my sister says. She looks it up for me. But this is wonderful, having a pantry. And Patera and 
Marie at Homestead Heart, Patera at Appalachian Homestead, they teach us how to build a pantry. And maybe it starts with one meal that you can fix from a few cans. Somebody made a, a chicken cobbler the other day. I have dried chicken, dried roasted chicken, little cubes that I could hydrate with some hot water. I buy it by the canister. I bought it for the cat and, and she quit eating it. But I could put that with some, some dried vegetables with some hot water, put a can of chicken soup in it, stir up some Bisquick, or I don't have Bisquick, but I have self-rising flour and some buttermilk. I have powdered buttermilk. I could make a, a chicken pot pie. But it, she, they called it chicken cobbler the other day. Just poured this stuff, the biscuit, and it had cheese in it and everything. Poured it over the, the vegetables, and they had chicken pot pie, chicken cobbler, anything you put dough on. You can turn it into a cobbler. I have dried fruits, dried apples. All you got to do is hydrate them with some boiling water and you're good to go. Okay, Mary, don't say like, praise be to the Lord for your grandma getting married on Saturday. By train. Wow. I hadn't been on a train in 25, 24 years. 2000, we went on a train. Anyway, y'all, being prepared. Maybe put together three meals you can have that you can have on your pantry shelf that is an emergency. That is an emergency. Maybe it's some cans of soup. Buy a, go to the dollar store and get some cans of soup. Buy some soup starter stuff. And you can put together some soup. You can do it. But having a backup plan in the event that you can't get to the grocery store. You know, I followed. I got three books from Beverly Nye many years ago and this this woman i guess that's, she's the one that set me on my track of being prepared having a stocked pantry having those books when i was a young mother young mother because you never know when you can't get to we had one car at the time and i couldn't go to the grocery store every day I couldn't go to the grocery store every day. So I had backup plans. Backup plans are easy. Planning's not hard. It's the implementing it. So if you're going to write, write down three meals that you can cook that wouldn't take a major appliance. I mean, I have a, I have a teapot that I can plug in to my generator. I have a coffee pot that I can plug into my generator. And if the power goes out, which our power has flashed quite a bit in the last few days, we've had some high wind. Yesterday, we had the strangest thunder I have ever heard. And it was a thunderstorm blowing up on top of us. And the thunder rumbled for a full minute. It was so strange. Robert came out of his treehouse and I came out of the house. And we had the door open and I just looked at him and I said, I think it's time we shut the doors. <laughs> he said, I think you're right. He was wondering if, if something got hit over at Oak Ridge. <laughs> I said, I don't think so. I think we know that we wouldn't be here. Anyway, folks, have just, just pick three meals you can put together out of your pantry. If you've already got the stuff in your pantry, that's fine. If you have nothing in your pantry, start with three meals that you could make. Maybe it's some burritos. Maybe you got a can of refried beans um, and 
whatever. You're, somebody says tuna sandwiches, cereal, soup. That's, that's a plan. That's a plan. I've got a can of powdered eggs. What do you do with powdered eggs? You mix water with it and you turn it into an omelet. So put together three meals and then go to the grocery store and make either you have it already in your pantry or you've got to get it for your pantry. And you don't touch this unless there's an emergency. Now you need to rotate it in and out like every six months, use it up and replace it. But that's getting in your plant pantry. That's taking care of your pantry. This is an amazing thing to do for you and your family is to always have a, a little backup plan that you know you can cook. Like I had Robert put mayonnaise on, on our grocery list. Well, I'm getting ready to put a jar of mayonnaise into the refrigerator because we have just like this much mayonnaise left. And my cat loves the mayonnaise. She loves mayonnaise. I don't know why. Is it salty? I don't, I don't know why she loves it, but she loves it. And he said, we didn't need mayonnaise. We've got two under here. I said, one of them's getting ready to go in here and I was going to need to replace it. I have a rule. If we have two things in the pantry, when one runs out that's in the refrigerator, then I have to replace the one. I just did it a few days ahead of time. Just a few days ahead of time. So folks, what's on your plan for today? If planning's not hard. It's the implementation of that plan so that you can be prepared for what comes your way. Maybe you get sick. Now, I'm not wishing that on anybody, but maybe you can't leave the house for a few days. Right now, that's what you got to do. Patty says, Root, Fly Lady routines are a plan on how to live with peace. They become automatic. We don't have to plan them every day. That's why I put them in sheet protectors. So I didn't have to write them every day. I have them in my head. I get up. I make my bed. I go to the bathroom. I do a swish and swipe. I grab a load of laundry. I head to the kitchen. If there's something that needs to be done in the kitchen, like empty the dishwasher, that's the first thing I do when I get into the kitchen. But I'm dressed to lace up shoes, ready to go. I was listening to um, Pastor I was as I was closing up things last night to get ready to go to bed. I was listening to Pastor um, Whitfield Harrington. My first boss last name was Whitfield. So that's what drew me to him when Petra, Patera, I have a, niece, I have a great niece named Petra. I, when Patera, when Patera recommended Pastor Harrington, and he was talking about a dream that somebody had, had sent him that he had, and he was sort of looking at this dream. And you know what he said about this, this man had dreamed about a pair of shoes. Y'all, where's the tornado warning? Where's the tornado warning? Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Let me see. Let me get, if you don't have radar scope, you got to get radar scope. And I pull it way out and I look at the whole country and there it is. It's around Kansas City. Missouri and on this app radar scope I can see all the warnings and they're in Missouri Clay and Clinton County tornado radar indicated and three quarter inch hail so y'all we had hail yesterday but not at our house next county over so this is around Kansas City. So y'all be aware. 
know what's going on. This it got 80 degrees yesterday and the storm blew up. Just pop up storm. As Justin said, when you get 80 degrees in the mountains, the mountains say, hey, we need a storm. But this dream that the that with Pastor Harrington was was interpreting. He said shoes. He was talking about shoes and having your shoes on and not having your and he he said, Where are your shoes right now? <laughs> Where are your shoes right now? Are they on your feet? Are you ready to run out the door if you need to? He said, wherever your shoes are. He said, when I was a little kid, I grew up in the country and I could run with my bare feet on gravel. He said, I can't do that anymore. I have to have my shoes on. So knowing where your shoes are and having them on your feet until you go to bed and, and knowing where they are when you go to bed so that you can grab and go. This is People who have experienced earthquakes where things fell down around them, fires, floods. You got to get, you got to know where your shoes are. And that's part of our having routines. We get dressed to those lace up shoes. We don't question it. I mean, I have started, I have started to rebuke the word why. Why? Sometimes we don't need to ask why. Whether you're asking God or you're, you're, you're asking your sweet darling, we don't need to ask why. Sometimes we just need to do. We don't have to know why. When we get people who um, question us about the routines, they want to know all about the whole system before they ever get started. That's their perfectionism. And asking why, why do we have to do this when we take this step? Why do we have to do this? I've just started, I'm going to remove that word from my vocabulary because it it is disruptive. I think it's of the evil one to ask why. When we know the facts, when we know the facts, Okay, I think Fly Baby Sage has a doctor's appointment this morning. Dear Father in Heaven, please be with Sage and her doctor's appointment. Please be with my sweet darling as he goes to a doctor's appointment. He doesn't have anything wrong, Lord, so we're thankful for that. Lord, we love you. Please be with fly babies who are traveling right now. Please be with fly babies who are, are staying focused on getting their homes and pantries in order. Give them strength. Give them the tools they need to accomplish what is important in their homes. Thank you, Lord, for the example of Joseph, who was able to interpret Pharaoh's dream and have seven years of take seven years of plenty and store what was needed for the seven years of famine. Lord, famine has always been on, on this world. It just moves around. The evil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And we're going to rebuke that evil, but we're going to be prepared for when these bad times come our way because we're going to have a pantry that's stocked. We're going to have doors that are guarded. We're going to have the ability to open the door to the people we choose to help because we never know when we are entertaining angels, Lord. We never know. So thank you, Lord, for sending your angels to protect us like those little children in Nashville last year. Lord, we love you. We love you so much. 
Thank you for teaching me about the word why. I will never argue with you, Lord. I won't ask why. I don't need to ask why. If you've asked me to do something, that's all that I need. Because I have faith and I know your voice. And I know the voice of the other one. You get all the glory, Lord. Thank you so much for the peace in our hearts that comes from simple routines. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Y'all, there's some amazing things happening all around the world. <laughs> you know, swapping out diesel engines is not easy, but I'm glad he was patient. Your husband was patient and he did it. Let's see, don't ask why, ask what can I do in this situation? Oh, that's beautiful, mama. That's beautiful. Y'all, we got lots to do. But we don't have to be panicked. We just have to have three meals in the pantry. And then the stuff you're going to cook the rest of the week. And if you haven't planned your menus for next week, do it now. But add three meals to that grocery list so that you, so that you will have the beginnings of a pantry. It doesn't take much. You can start a pantry under an extra bedroom bed. Under your couch. You can get some rolling sweater containers. that You can put a lot of canned goods in and just roll them right under your couch. God gets all the glory, y'all. When we're, you know, Robert gave me a quote once upon a time. Desperate people do desperate things. Think about that. If you don't have anything in your home to feed your child, you might be tempted to go out on, go out and steal. You might be tempted to prostitute yourself. Yeah, I said it. You might be, I've been reading a book, this wonderful book, where women prostituted themselves to get money for drugs. And they totally for, didn't even think about their families. If I get a big bag of rice, like from the, um, the Asian food market, I have bought 25 pounds of rice before and I have a I have a tub of 25 pounds of rice. It always goes in the freezer for about a week. Then I take it out and then it's shelf stay. Shelf stable. So y'all, we can we can do a lot of things. We can do a lot. Maybe you just want to buy 2 pounds of rice. Rice goes a long way. Rice goes a long way. And learn to cook it. It's not hard to cook. One cup of rice, two cups of water, a little salt, a little oil, bam. Bring it to a bowl, let it sit for 20 minutes, and you got a pan of rice. You got it. You can make extra and turn it into lots of things. Throw some mixed vegetables with it. Stir, stir it around, and you can have reef. You know, fried rice. Patty loves shrimp fried rice, chicken fried rice. Recipes are everywhere. Mexican rice is amazing. And you know what they do? They put some salsa in it. What's the title of the book I'm reading? My friend Donna sent me this book from my front row seat. And it's by Susan Binkley. So I sent Donna yesterday. Miss Brenda 
Spawn's book about the Love Lady Center. And because this book had me laughing, this book had me crying. I'm I'm about two hours in. I'd listen to it. But she has a heart of service. And I have, you know, as as a firstborn child, I'm a fixer. I've always been a fixer. But she helped me to understand fixing's not what I'm supposed to do. My purpose is service. Service to you to teach you a new way to think, a new way to do, a new way to be. And it it doesn't happen overnight. It took me nine months of getting rid of the clutter in my home for me to be able to keep my house clean. Life is good, y'all. We just have to quit quit asking a why and, and do. Put our shoes on. Make a grocery list. Putting your shoes on is being prepared. One testimony we got one time, a fly baby who was down in Mississippi, I think, because there was lots of trucks hauling logs. But she was getting the groceries out of the car. And she didn't know her, her little toddler could unbuckle his car seat. And while she's taking groceries in, he has gotten out of his car seat and climbed out of the car. She thought he was asleep. Next thing she knows is he's running down the driveway to see the big trucks. And you know what? She had her shoes on and she was able to run down that driveway. Now, she she would have done it anyway. And she would have been running just like Pastor Harrington when he was a kid. He could run on gravel. And she would have run down that driveway with her bare feet because it's a mama's heart. It's a mama's heart. So God gets all the glory. Having those shoes on gets you prepared for anything. Like this morning, I had my shoes on. The dog wanted in. And I went outside and surveyed my garden. I'm going to have strawberries, y'all. I got strawberry blooms all on my porch. I'm so happy. Just covered in little white blooms. I got peonies getting ready to pop. Hot pink peonies. Imagine that. I'm excited. I am so excited. It's And I've got potatoes that need to be planted. Anyway, y'all. Be good, kind, and sweet. Be good to yourself by putting three meals in your pantry that you can fix. Easily. Maybe it's just a can of soup. But that's okay. That's okay. Be kind to others by be ready to help in an emergency. Yeah. And let that joy and sweetness that is in your heart open up. And show the world that you're a child, that your actions, your actions, not, not your words, your actions show people who you are. Who you are. I love you all. I will see you at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Let me... Wait a second. Y'all, we're, we're still getting back to basics. Let me get this done right here. We're day 16. Read a morning musing. Our messages simply change your thinking. We teach you how to become your own cheerleader 
and ignore the naysayers in your life. Forget it. I've heard two people in the last 24 hours talking about naysayers. I'm doing what God put me here to do. To be your biggest cheerleader. Maybe this afternoon I'll talk about why she's in a cheerleading uniform. So y'all, get ready. Be prepared. You don't have to think of think if things are going to be bad. It's just being prepared. Because desperate people do desperate things. And if you've got food in your pantry, you don't have to feel stressed out. It's going to be like camping out. That's the way I look at emergencies. It's like a little house on the prairie in a storm. And it wouldn't hurt to have some little house on the prairie books in your house so that you could read a chapter book to your kids. Yesterday, when that long rolling thunder hit, I just started rebuking it in the name of Jesus. We got very little rain. We we didn't even, I know we heard thunder, but we didn't see any lightning. We didn't have too much flashing going on. But I rebuked it, and it went past us. God gets all the glory. God gets all the glory. So buy a, little, a wholesome little house on the prayer book to have, to sit down and read with your children. This is fun stuff. We, I had a teacher that did that with me when I was in third grade, Miss Barton. I'll never forget her. And it's not a movie. It's a book. Because we've got to let our kids' imagination happen. And they're wholesome. You ha There's a cookbook. Wow, I'm going to have to look that up. Anyway, I love you all. I will see you later. Oh, and about the butterflies. She loves butterflies, y'all. I used to have, I showed you the painting of it yesterday, the canvas of my butterfly weed. I've been looking for butterfly weeds to plant because I used to have a beautiful one that I took that picture and monarchs, butterflies love it. Having a representation of a butterfly's home is going to make me happy this year. So I'm going to get me some butterfly weed that, that are already grown. And I can just put them in the ground. I love you all. I'm getting excited about gardening y'all just really excited about gardening. I'll see you later. Bye.